Good day. Now, today we welcome Lisa Chepek. She's from Henley & Partners. She's going to speak on global citizenship and relocation. Lisa is a senior manager and a client advisor at Henley & Partners here in South Africa. She's responsible for the Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal region. Lisa is a qualified lawyer with over 20 years of experience in the field of immigration law. Lisa has been advising ultra and high net worth clients within uh, HNP since 2016, and she joins us now on this topic. Lisa, it's great to have you, and thank you so much for your time. There's been a lot of discussion and interest around issues of um, a second residence elsewhere or citizenship. Why? And why is it topical at the moment? Larasha, there's, there's a couple of reasons why um, this is very topical at the moment and a, a lot of it has to do with, um, with, with the pandemic, the global pandemic. It certainly has affected um, you know, this, this business and industry on a, on a global scale with high net worth clients looking for alternative solutions. Um, you know, having been been bound to their country and not being able to travel, um, people are feeling restricted. Um, people are also concerned about you know um, the way their countries are being governed. Um, South African clients, for example, are looking at um, you know better healthcare systems, um, better governance in terms of business bailouts. Should should something like this happen again? So it certainly has um, spiked an increase in, 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 the, in the industry of late. Um, and a second factor which makes it even more topical at the moment is, is the riots, you know, from a South African perspective. The, the KZN riots and, you know, obviously affected Joburg and other country, um, parts of the country as well, have, have made people unsettled. You know, our high net worth clients are they don't want to be in this in this position again, and and if this happens again, they want to be able to to get on a plane and, and get their families to safety. So yes, at the moment, very very topical indeed. And are there any countries in particular where they'd like to pursue either residence or citizenship? So so Narata Henley and Partners, um, we're a global firm, and and we are able to assist clients with um, over 36 different programs, different countries that have residence or, pro, um, or citizenship programs on offer. Um, and there certainly are countries that are, are, are of more interest than, than others. And it's, it's really got to do with um, the nuances of every program, um, the, you know, the financial requ uh, requirements, how many family members they can include in the application or not include in the application, you know, as a result of the ages of the kids or, or, or parents. So there are a lot of reasons that, you know, factors that come into play um, when considering what jurisdiction clients um, should invest in or, or, or go to. And um, the most the most popular, however, would, would be Portugal in terms of the Portuguese golden visa. Although clients aren't typically relocating to Portugal. You know, it's it's that plan B solution. It's it's having that residency option um, which allows them to stay in South Africa um, and just have that that plan B and that security in their back pockets that, you know, should the kids one day want to go overseas and, and study or go and set up a life overseas or you know, business owners want to go and, and, and expand their business on a global basis, these residency and citizenship solutions give, give them that opportunity. So yeah, Portugal is a popular one. Um, Montenegro has a program which is also very popular of late. And um, from an uh, immigration perspective, Australia has always been one of the more popular ones for South African clients with, with the UK, um, you know, second, second in tow as well. Mm. Okay, so you are speaking about immigration as something quite different to residence. So could you just point to us the differences between residence and citizenship? Absolutely, Lerato, and, a, and an important, um, you know, to, to distinguish between the two. So, so a lot of um, countries out there are offering residence or citizenship to investors. So the governments at the end of the day are running the country like a business. They're looking at getting inward investment and in return they're offering the right of residence or citizenship. So residency 
typically ties an investor to one particular country. So for example, Mauritius, you get residency in Mauritius, you invest, you get the residency. That allows you to live there, to work there, kids can study there. And it basically ties you to that country that you have residence in. Citizenship, on the other hand, you could typically equate with a passport. So citizenship of, for example, a country like Portugal um, is a passport. So Portuguese passport, which is an EU country. So that, of course, entitles you as an EU citizen to live, work or study in any of the 27 EU countries. So citizenship gives you a lot more than, than residency does. And then, of course, it also depends on, on budget and financial um, requirements. So citizenship typically comes at a higher price tag than residency. But again, you know, all depends on, on the jurisdiction. Um, the Caribbean, for example, has citizenship programs. So passport outright within about six months to get a passport. And, um, you know, they are certainly the, the, the less expensive um, choice than, than for example, a, an EU passport. This is quite interesting. Now, let's talk about your home country. And in this case, it would be South Africa for many of um, the ultra and high net worth uh, clients we are talking to. Does South Africa allow dual citizenship or do you have to give up your South African citizenship in order for you to obtain another passport? Lerata, a valid question and, um, and something which is, is important for, for clients to know. Uh, South Africa does allow dual citizenship and most of the countries that we um, offer you know, citizenship or residence programs with do also allow the dual citizenship. So from a South African government perspective, all that is required is that they are made aware of the client obtaining a second citizenship. So it's all part of our, our service and our, our um, you know, the, the process when a client does engage with Henley and Partners to go through a citizenship program at the appropriate time before they actually get their second citizenship there's a formality and a process um, whereby Home Affairs needs to be notified um, and the South African citizen can then retain their South African citizenship. Now, earlier on, I asked you which countries were popular, but within um, the catalogue of programmes that you've described for us, what are the popular programmes when people come and approach Henley and Partners? So, Often, you know, um, clients, well, sometimes they have a, a particular program in mind. They, they've done their research and they, you know, have sort of narrowed it down. A lot of the time clients are exploring, you know, they, they have sort of um, realized the need for a, a, a plan B. And um, they come to us and they, they ask, you know, what is out there? What are the options? And, you know, there are 36 different jurisdictions that we deal with. Um, uh, there's about six in the Caribbean. Uh, there is a, a, a lot in, in, in Europe, you know, Malta, Cyprus, Portugal, um, Greece, Italy, Spain, you know, goes, the list goes on. And, um, you know, Mauritius, uh, there's Australia, the UK, Canada, the US, they all have options. Clients at the moment, I would say the most popular programs are Portugal and Montenegro in, from a European perspective. And if we look at towards the Caribbean, it, it varies there, but Grenada is, is one that definitely is, um, you know, is, is of interest to the South African client because they allow an additional offering in terms of access into the US, which the other Caribbean countries don't have that, that offering. And then if we're looking if we're looking at immigration you know australia definitely is a country that south africans are looking at um, and the uk would would be second to that when when clients are looking at immigrating lorato it, it's typically to a english-speaking country um, you know understandably however most of our clients um, are actually looking at the plan b so you know country a european residence or citizenship is, um, you know, is 
is enough for them um, to, to have that, that solution and plan B option available. And when they say they're looking for the plan B, uh, Lisa, is it a case of, you know, in case um, things were to implode, we need to have somewhere to go, or it's just looking for somewhere to be resident as we explore more investment opportunities? What's sort of the conversation and the tone? So it varies, Lerato. I mean, it, it varies a lot. We have clients that are looking at ex expanding their business globally. So they would be looking, you know, at a particular area. For example, they're doing business in the US and then they would be looking for options to, to enter the US. Um, similarly, those that are looking at European expansion of their business. So they would look, look there. And then probably the most common situation is, is a family, you know, South African passport holders who are concerned about the future of the country. They, they are main, their main concern is, is the children. You know, what, what opportunities do they have going forward in terms of education, tertiary education, uh, careers. So in that situation, a lot of them look more towards Europe because Europe offers more of a settlement solution. Um, you know, not many, the, the idea of a Caribbean country to, to visit and holiday is, is, is of appeal. However, if you're looking at settling a family one day or, you know, starting, starting careers one day, it's probably not the, the, you know, the best solution. So in that respect, clients would definitely um, you know, steer more towards the, the European countries. And can you give us a profile of your typical client? So our typical client is a South African passport holder saying that, you know, we, we our South African office does handle all sub-Saharan um, clients. So we do, we do have, you know, Zimbabwe passport holders, Kenyan passport holders, etc. Um, so, so really a, a, a restrictive passport. So our South African passport, although it allows visa-free travel to 101 countries, those 101 countries are not ideally the countries that our high net worth clients want to frequent. So it's, you know, looking for a passport or a solution that allows them to travel visa-free to the Schengen zone, to the UK, um, and, and, you know, a myriad of other, other countries as well. So typically, you know, your, your South African passport holder, they would be required to be, you know, high net worth slash ultra high net worth because these programs do require a substantial investment. In, in those countries. And then when they do come to you, Lisa, final question. I know that you've got a broad program, you operate in different jurisdictions, your, your, your uh, tentacles stretch far, but how do you start the process for a family and what level of help do you offer? We offer an end-to-end -end solution for our clients. Um, we also offer a, a white glove service in terms of the, the, the solution. You know, it's, it's, it's what high net worth clients um, are accustomed to. It's, it's what they expect. They, they typically want to be handheld through the process from beginning to end. And, and that's what we offer. So, you know, we have the global presence to allow that handholding service. We have offices on the ground. We have an office in Johannesburg, in Durban, and in Cape Town locally. And then we have a Henley and Partners team on the ground in all of the other jurisdictions across 30 different locations. So the client is, 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 is the, we, we, we hold their hand from the beginning of the process to the end when they are issued their you know, passport, for example, um, if there is a, a property transaction as part of the process, we assist them with that. We, you know, we show them properties. We introduce them to to developers. Uh, the same goes for if there's a, um, a an investment of sorts required into a financial instrument or a fund. We would introduce them to the fund managers. So, so we really do assist them with the entire process to to get that residency and citizenship or citizenship. Thank you so much, Lisa, for taking the time to share your knowledge with us today and also for helping us understand the difference between um, immigration and full citizenship and also residence for those Plan B options. That's all for now. Goodbye. Until next time.